We all know what a standard city or town looks like. Rows and rows of offices, apartment buildings, and shops that look pretty much the same from one place to the next. Not everywhere is like that, though. Cast your eyes a little further afield, and you'll find crazy places that look like something from the outer reaches of your imagination. Whether they've occurred naturally or been built by design geniuses, this video contains the most incredible locations in the world. Hutuan in China was abandoned by human beings years ago, but that doesn't mean that no life exists here. Quite the opposite. This old fishing village might just be the greenest place in the whole world. When humanity stepped out, nature stepped in and set about the work of reclaiming the land for itself. It's only 40 miles from Shanghai, but looks like it belongs to a different universe. When the 2,000 fishermen who once lived here departed, they left many of their own personal possessions behind. And those possessions are still here, inside the crumbling houses. It's just that the houses are now coated with thick vegetation. Now, the village has found a second life as a tourist attraction. And many of the tour guides are the very same people who used to fish here. If we asked you what the entrance to hell looked like, you'd probably picture somewhere very hot. Ask an Austrian, though, and they'll tell you it's through an ice cave below the Hochkogel Mountain near Salzburg in their home country. The cave is called Eisreisenwelt, which translates into English as the world of the ice giants. You can see just by looking at it why the Austrians of old must have imagined giant ice creatures lived here. Unusual formations like this occur when ice builds up underneath an existing cave that's already been formed from limestone or lava. Superstitious locals avoided the area for years because of the rumor that it was a portal to hell. But a brave explorer called Anton Poselt finally entered it in 1879. He didn't find the devil waiting for him, just some amazing scenery. Now, around a quarter of a million people come to see it every year, making the journey by cable car. On Mikamvi Pingwe Beach in Zanzibar, Tanzania, you'll find a restaurant like no other. The beach is a sight worth seeing in its own right. The sand is almost white, and the water which laps the shore is a crystal clear shade of blue. It's the restaurant that's the star attraction, though. It's called The Rock, and it used to be a hut for fishermen. When the tide is out, you can see how it got its name. It's just a wooden shack sat on top of a rugged set of boulders. When the tide comes in, though, it completely cuts the rock off from the land, leaving it floating above the water and surrounded on all sides. That's why visitors sometimes have to come by boat. Once inside the tiny 12-seat restaurant, diners are treated to a breathtaking view of the Indian Ocean while they enjoy exotic cocktails and choose their courses from a global menu. Best of all, a portion of the profits made by the restaurant go back into supporting the local community. The Burning Man Festival isn't so much a place as a happening. It's a festival of radical expression, and it's been happening since June 1986, when two friends named Larry Harvey and Jerry James built a giant effigy to the human form and burned it on the beach in San Francisco. Now it's an annual celebration of art, diversity, and culture which happens from the last Sunday in August to the first Monday of September every year in the middle of Nevada's Black Rock Desert. When the people arrive, it goes from being Black Rock Desert to Black Rock City. This is a place for creative souls to flock and find new ideas, often finding themselves in the process. Each year brings a new theme, and with each theme comes incredible art, music, and innovation. Wonders are created here and then packed away disappearing almost into thin air, in accordance with the festival's ethos of leaving no trace behind itself. Attendees, known as burners, are encouraged to investigate and embrace the ideas of self-reliance, self-expression, and radical inclusion. Money rarely changes hands at the Burning Man. Objects and ideas are either given as gifts or paid for by way of exchange. Keep a special eye out for the art cars. You'll get a helping hand when you cross the Golden Bridge just outside Da Nang in Vietnam. And we mean that quite literally. 
The long, winding bridge is held up above the beautiful landscape by a gigantic pair of stone hands, which seem to reach out from the hillside and hold you in the air. The Golden Bridge is a recent installation in the country, but since pictures of it went viral on the internet, visitors from all around the world have been flocking here to see it for themselves. Vu Viet An is the architect who dreamed up the fantastical idea, and they spoke of their vision for creating a thread that stretched between the hands of God and allowing people to walk across it. It was a gigantic project, almost as gigantic as the hands themselves, but no damage was caused to the ancient cliffs around it in the process of the building work. Flower beds have been planted along the bridge to make it look prettier, but it's the panoramic view of Vietnam's hills that truly catches the eye. This stunning site isn't one to visit if you're scared of heights. It's the Beiling Elevator in China, and at over a thousand feet high, it's the tallest outdoor lift anywhere on the planet. Climbing aboard the elevator allows you an up-close and personal look at the all-natural sandstone pillars, which shoot up from the forests of Zhangjiajie National Forest Park in Hunan. If you've ever seen the movie Avatar, they might look a little familiar. They were the inspiration for the floating Hallelujah Mountains. The pillars alone stand 3,000 feet tall, so factor in the elevator on top of them and you're almost in the sky. Despite the height, the three elevator cars which operate here can make the journey from the bottom to the top in only 90 seconds. The lifts were introduced to alleviate the damage caused by thousands of people walking up the mountain trails each year. Now they can do things the fast and convenient way instead, so long as they have the stomach for the ride. You don't expect to find ice caves right next to volcanoes, but there's one in Kamchatka in Russia. Travel to the slopes of the Mutnovsky volcano and you'll find a freezing cold cave packed full of ice and displaying every color of the rainbow. The rainbow effect is all down to the way the light reflects off the icy walls as it beams through the entrance to the cave. All of the ice here is melting thanks to the proximity of the volcano, and in the event of a full eruption, the cave can even be completely destroyed, as it was in 2000 when Mutnovsky last erupted. Even if it does though, nature will reassert its will, and a brand new cave with just as much beauty will be formed. The cave is positioned low on the mountain slope, so even inexperienced climbers should have no difficulty accessing it. You can even take in the sights of the Vulcanaya River on your way. What's worse than being stuck inside a haunted house? Well, how about being stuck inside a haunted house that's full of terrifying robotic monsters? Travel to Berlin, Germany and book yourself a tour of the famous Monster Cabinet and you might just get the scare of a lifetime. Don't say we didn't warn you. The strangely named Dead Pigeon Collective are the artists who have put the whole thing together. They took a disused warehouse and filled it with a mixture of art from your worst nightmares and performers in costumes whose job it is to terrify you. Which of the exhibits are just sculptures? Which of them might jump out at you in any given moment? You have no way of knowing. Even if you don't have arachnophobia, there's something deeply unsettling about being chased around in the dark by a robotic spider, and that's just one of the horrors that await you. The Monster Cabinet is open on Thursdays and Fridays all year round, but be warned, some of the scares on offer aren't listed on the website. They like to surprise you. Sedlik Ossuary in the Czech Republic looks like a beautifully detailed Gothic church until you get a little closer to it and realize that the builders chose a strange material to build it out of. Everything here is made out of bone. Not just any old bones either, they are all human bones. Nobody knows for sure how many complete skeletons there are here. Conservative estimates say it's 40,000, but some say it might be as many as 70,000. For obvious reasons, it goes by the nickname of the Bone Church and its centerpiece is a ghoulish chandelier, which has been made using every bone the human body has to offer. The story of Sedlik Ossuary dates back to the 13th century, when the abbot of the monastery scattered soil from Jerusalem on the land. That made it the most desirable place to be buried anywhere in the region, 
but there was only so much room for the bones to go. By 1870, it was at capacity, so a local woodcarver was hired to perform the unusual task of turning the excess bones into art. They are all bleached to give them a uniform appearance, and then arranged into drapes, crests, candle holders, and furniture of all kinds. You can't cross the Rakotsbrucke Devil's Bridge in Kromlar Park in Germany anymore, but you can still go to visit it and marvel at the way it seems to form a perfect circle as it meets the water. The surrounding area of Kromlau is green and pretty anyway, making it a fine location for a day trip. But the bridge is the icing on the cake. The bridge was built in 1860, stretching over the Rakotsi in a thin, twisted style that was popular with architects of the time. It gained the nickname of the Devil's Bridge because locals thought it was so unsafe and seemingly so unnatural in design that satanic hands must have built it. They might have a point. It looks fantastic, but it was never much use as a bridge. Thin spires of rock secure it to the banks, and the curve was specifically designed to give the circular effect. In achieving the desired aesthetic, the builders sacrificed a lot of the functionality. Before long, it became apparent that walking across it was just too dangerous, and now visitors are banned from doing so in case it collapses. We tend to associate the French with fine art, and it appears their aesthetic talents extend to the way in which they present their gardens. Nowhere in the world will you find a more magnificent and well-tended garden than the Chateau de Marquisac in Visage. The house and gardens were constructed during the 17th century by one of King Louis XIV's councillors on a carefully selected piece of land which overlooked the stunning Dordogne Valley. It wasn't until Julien de Carvel took ownership of the property in 1860 that the gardens began to take on their unique appearance, though. De Carvel planted boxwood trees on his land in carefully planned patterns and trimmed them into unusual shapes. Today, there are over 150,000 of them, with the smaller rounded ones looking like a huge flock of green sheep from a distance. Three miles of paths were laid out, winding between the trees, offering visitors a bespoke tour of the land. Sadly, things fell into disrepair during the 20th century, but a restoration project in 1996 restored their beauty, and also added a cascading water feature and Rosemary Alley as finishing touches. Italy's Park of Monsters looks like a quaint tourist attraction, but there's actually a sad story behind it. The Garden of Terrifying Sculptures in Bomarzo was originally a testament to one man's unbearable grief. Prince Pier Francesco Orsini was the man in question, and he'd had a difficult few years. He'd fought in a war, lost his best friend during that war, been held hostage, and then returned home to find his wife sick and dying. After she passed away in 1552, he commissioned the building of a series of screaming sculptures from a local artist, all of which were designed to shock. The unearthly creatures here include an elephant of war, a gigantic fish head, two giants fighting hand to hand, and a huge screaming face, upon which is written, there is no logic. Only after Salvador Dali visited it in the 20th century and declared it as a work of surrealist beauty did people begin to see it in a new light. Now it's a quirky tourist attraction. You can even have a picnic inside the mouth of the screaming face, where a table and chairs have been laid out just for the occasion. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.